but the game was different, right? The, the, the rules was different. The ball oh, was the Euro, different. The, like, Euro, the Euro style is different in America. The Euro style was a lot different <laughs> than America. <laughs> That's the Especially. first time y'all seen that Euro step too, huh? Absolutely. Uh, what's up, guys? My name is Menno Dijkstra. I'm from the Netherlands. Um, I uh, did my university at UC Riverside, California. It's an hour from Los Angeles. And um, I got my bachelor degree in uh, sociology, which I got in the summer of 2019. Um, I'm currently a professional basketball player in Spain for Estia Menorca um, in the La Plata level. Um, yeah, just here to talk to you guys about, you know, my, my journey to college and, and what it took and, and give you guys some tips and some inside information. Meno, it is amazing having you here, um, a.k.a. The Big Red. Um, sure. thanks, thanks for hanging out with us today. How and why did you choose UC Riverside? Uh, the reason I chose UC Riverside was because uh, they were one of the few schools that really recruited me heavily, you know, they called me all the time. They really showed interest in me. Um, one of my best friends uh, went to school there so he could, you know, give me some insight about the coaches, about the campus, stuff like that. Um, and I also wanted to go to a really good educational school. And uh, UC Riverside and, and the UC system in California is one of the top, top uh, rated school systems in the country. Um, so that was very important for me. Uh, and on top of that, you know, it's it's California. Yeah. It's it's Los Angeles. Nice weather, <laughs> nice beaches, palm trees. Um, you know, coming from the Netherlands, I I never seen this. I never experienced this. So, you know, all the, those... rumor, the, the rumor has it the Netherlands and the California have same weather. Like I heard, it's like pretty much the same thing. No, is that not how it goes? Maybe maybe in like fifty <laughs> to hundred years with with the global warming, but absolutely not. So. I remember walking down there and seeing palm trees and it's it's 40 <laughs> Celsius and I'm like, oh my. Um, but yeah, those those reasons on top of each other really made UC Riverside interesting for me. Okay, great. Um, what type of scholarship did you get and did your grades play any factor? Um, so I got a full scholarship, uh, which means that they uh, paid for my school and everything, my housing as well. Um, and grades definitely uh, played a very big factor because it was as simple as if you did not get good grades, you're not playing, you know, all you'll do is study. You're not practicing with the team. You're not playing. You're not going to any games. And if that stays on for a long time, they will take your scholarship right back and, and you'll, you'll be back to where you started. Did your grades play any factor in terms of you being recruited though? And, and your scholarship. So was it like yeah. a full? Well, did you get a full, um, a full athletic scholarship, or was it half athletic and half academic? No, it. I, I received a full athletic scholarship, mm -hmm. um, but my grades from high school definitely mattered, especially because I went to uh, such a high-rated school education. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, so I had, I had, I have a very high GPA needed. My SATs, I took them a couple of times because I needed certain numbers. Um, mm -hmm. So they were very, very strict with that. Okay, yeah, that that makes sense. Um, just off the top, I'm not that I'm expecting you to really remember, but what did your GPA have to be to get in? What was the entry requirements? Can you remember? No drama. If you Above three point Okay. I think in an SATs, it was um, above 1400 for reading a math. No, no, that's no, above a thousand for reading a math. That's what it was. Okay, okay. okay. All right, so it's, yeah, I hear you. Some guys, yeah, some guys might struggle. All right. Um, when you was being recruited, uh, what questions did you ask the coach or the coaching staff? Did you ask them any questions? Um, not enough. Okay. You know, looking back on it, I definitely would want to ask different questions and also, you know, um, more. Because the question I ask myself, how far is Los Angeles? You know, how far is the beach? Like those, those are not the right questions to ask. Um, <laughs> but, but, but I also ask them like, um, how they see me for four years, you know? What will they do to me with the, my four years of me planning on being there? You know, my my 
my growth as a basketball player, my skill development, you know, the, the physical aspect of the game, all those little things, you know, I wanted to hear what type of plan they had with me and also the role in my team, even as a freshman. You know, I, I wanted to play as a freshman. I didn't want to be one of those freshmen who just sits on the bench and maybe plays the last minute when you're up 30. Um, so, and I, and I played as a freshman, so, you know, they, they kept the word on that end. Um, but yeah, those type of questions I, I've asked numerous amount of times. What questions do you wish you asked your, you know, the coaches and coaching staff? Um, more about um, how how they look at, at the way they practice, how they how they want me, you know, to to um, associate myself with with the players, with the coaches. I, I I would have liked looking back on it to have a better relationship with my coaches. Um, to make me more feel more comfortable that way, because I remember, especially in the beginning, you know, you're in a new environment, you're young, you know, it's it's uncomfortable. You you don't really know. You're in the back, you know. You watch everybody, what's going on. Um, so that took a while for me to really get comfortable, you know, express my feelings with the coaching staff, you know, little things like that. Just just mean a huge deal when you eventually do it. Yes, yeah, that's I, I'd say that's pretty important. Can you tell us what league um, you see uh, Riverside play in and what was the league play like? So was it predominantly bigs? Uh, was it guard driven league? Was it up tempo? Was it very physical? Was it, can you just tell us what it's like to play in, uh, in that league, in that conference? Yeah, I play in the Big West Conference, um, which is mainly California and Hawaii. Um, and it was a it was a very guard heavy uh, conference. Um, a lot of isolation basketball, a lot of quick up up pace, down and back, full court um, basketball. Um, and you know that would have been one of the questions I would ask the coaches as well, because you know me, I'm the slowest guy on the court. You know it's not it doesn't really suit my style. Um, but but then again, I was able to because I'm one of the only real bigs out there, I was able to, you know, put my mark on the league and, and change change the league a little bit in that way. There are more bigs in it now, and you see a little shift change in that way, but it, it's a very guard heavy, very. Okay. Um, so you, you, you was just a guy coming down, hitting trailer threes and then running yeah, back up. Yeah, because I'm always the, always the latest, you know, maybe pass it one more time, pick and pop on the other end, you know. <laughs> Like you guys going without me, I'll, I'll catch up. There's no shot. <laughs> um, so, you know, now being a, a graduate, what helped you um, to do both of, of being a student athlete? What helped you or what hacks did you have um, to help you study and get your, you know, your degree, your bachelor's and be successful on the basketball court? Well, first of all, my mom, was always on my, you know, she's always yeah. like, you gotta get that degree, you know, basketball's not gonna last forever. I mean, she's been talking to me like that from an early age. So in my mind, I always was like, I need to get a degree after high school. Yes. I have to. And then I looked at the, at the options and then there's really no place that does it like college basketball, does it? Mm -hmm. Because it really gives you the ability to do both. Um, you know, because the co because your grades matter, the coaches are on you. You know, you have to go to study hall to do your homework, little things like that. You have teachers that help you. You know, maybe you're traveling and you, and you miss an exam, they'll help you. You can reschedule the exam, and and, and they're pretty flexible uh, with that. Um, so it was it was a perfect fit for me to, you know, get better at basketball, gain a life experience, and also get that piece of paper. That's at the end of the day even more important than, than any of that. Um, do you have any hacks? I, I don't want to say like cheating methods or shortcuts, but what was there anything that you kind of, you know, that helped you in particular? Um, I must say, really become friends with non-student athletes. Okay. Uh -huh. So especially in my first year, especially in my first year, I lived in the dorms, 
and and you live with people who are not athletes you know they're they're bio majors or math majors you know real smart kids um and they helped me with my english they helped me with my 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 other subjects you know they helped me understanding things they 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 showed me the library on my first week you know little things like that um that that really helped me and even though like sometimes you'll miss you'll miss classes they can take notes for you you know if you're good friends with them obviously yeah, 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 yeah. a kid um, but but i would say that that really helped me out a lot mm. you know what it's interesting i think everyone i think everyone minus diamond i think diamond could have said it but everyone's like hey making friends and like having a network of people yeah and I'm it's, it's, it's funny because it doesn't sound like to me, you know, talking to everyone, it's not like, hey, I'm making friends of you just because of this. It's, hey, I'm making friends with like outside of the basketball community and that relationship has benefits in other ways. Yeah, no, think, most you know, definitely, yeah. most definitely. And for me, it was also nice to sometimes um, hang out with non-athletes, you know, just a change of scenery, a change of topic. Uh, you know, because you see your teammates all the time and you're yeah. with them all the time. Get sick of them. I hear you. I hear you. Especially if it's those vets, right? If it's those vets that we, we <laughs> cut the vet. Oh, yeah. They always know them better, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, talking about language, funny enough, you, you brought up language. Now, you know, I know you was in, in Gran Canaria before you went out to, uh, to the States. But did you struggle any at all with the language barrier? Uh, you know, with your English? Um, obviously, CBA and Oakley College really helped me. Um, but I, I did. Um, and uh, my English was all right. I, I could, you know, I could easily go into a, a supermarket and, and get whatever. But it, it's those. You know those history th terms or those math terms that are the most difficult ones so especially in the beginning i would just go up to the teachers and say uh, listen sir like sometimes i might pull my phone up but that's just for using google translate okay okay you know and 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 those and, and the teachers are very very kind they'll be like you can just ask you know but 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 then yeah i'm not gonna ask 10 yeah, times in the middle of, yeah in the middle of the class yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, not, I'm not gonna do that so um it was but but after like a while, it, it's completely fine and you'll get used to it. Uh, how long did it take you to kind of be comfortable with the language? Uh, probably after, so I, my, my very freshman year, I did summer, summer school for five weeks. And after that, I did my first quarter of 10 weeks. And then the second quarter, I kind of started, you know, you did, you did one quarter, you did the full 10 weeks with everything. Then I started getting comfortable start to understand more things and and every every new quarter with new sub subjects and new topics there's always some words there okay like, oh, yeah, yeah 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 um but I, I i started feeling more comfortable by asking questions too yeah. sir i have no idea what this means please <laughs> okay um thinking about the community and the network that that you was in like did the college outside of the basketball team, did the, the university itself have any um, departments or clubs for international students to kind of be integrated into the system? Yes, we had, we had our international student system or club or, yeah, I think it's a system. Um, also because we'll just get exchange students for 10 weeks, you know, for that okay. period of time. Um, so, so they're 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 really helpful, and 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 they're everywhere. There there's there's so many people who their job is just to help you. You know, you have you have people whose job is just to help you schedule classes and what classes you should schedule. Um, and as soon as you find those people and really take advantage of them, because because that's why they're there. Don't try to be smart and be like, okay, I can figure this out myself. Um, I wouldn't always listen to the coaches neither because okay. they, have different, they have different interests that you might have. All they cared about is you taking easy classes so you get easy A's wherefore you can play. 
but maybe you want to take a whole different class or you want to take a sub major or a, or anything else so those people like they're so helpful and and but that's for any student that's not just international okay hey i like i like that that comment that you made about uh, coaches might try and get you to do the easy class as well because i guess without turning too bleak and gray at the minute it is a business and i'm not saying all coaches by no stretch of their imagination because i'm a coach myself but um at the end of the day it's it's, it's a business um and you know if their job or their livelihood is relying on their 610 recruit that's just come in and him playing well or him being available just in case our starter big gets in foul trouble or whatever like he needs to have you available so sometimes the motivation I don't say it comes from a wrong place, but you know, uh, the intentions oh, it's, are it's good. A little, it's a little bit different. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And my, my first summer school, those five weeks, I was in a dance class. <laughs> That's the first, very first class I ever took. And I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what on earth have I gotten myself into? I'm, and I'm, we're dancing, dancing, right? We're moving our feet. And you we're are moving. lying. I you are lying. lying. The very first class. And the reason they did that is because they know the teacher, because they do it every summer. They put the four or five new guys into this dance class so they get easy A's, so they're eligible for the season. <laughs> you didn't take a dance class. I dance, I took, a, I took an acting class. I, I'm, I'm acting out here, like I'm doing- No dance. way. No. Oh, I'm please, please tell me you've got videos or pictures. I need, I need to see it. I, oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, can, I can ask because the coaches they watch your final um, dance, like your <laughs> final performance, right? So maybe they have videos, but I hope it's mad. Six oh. ten, slow as molasses in a dance class. Yo, but guess what? We got that A, baby. Got that A. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> we are. Oh. That's amazing. That's like, oh my God, I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's by far my funniest thing I've heard doing these videos. But yeah, they, they will do those things just to keep you alive. And every now and then it's okay. Um, but you do need certain classes towards your degree. And, and for those, I would say talk to the advisors rather than your coaches. Okay, cool. <laughs> Man, so right, so when you was uh, a junior um, at high school and stuff, you was pretty good in terms of, you know, uh, star in the team, um, uh, you know, uh, top rebounder, scorer. Uh, but then when you were, went to college, your role changed, the culture changed, that, you know, from being one of the guys to now being a role player or someone that's just fitting in the system. Can you talk about how that, you know, how, how, how you adapted to that, adjusted to that? Yeah, no, no, definitely. Um, I, I was a captain uh, in my time at CBA, played 38 minutes a game. Um, and then you go to college and you play, you know, you're happy if you play 12 minutes your freshman year. And and especially me as a big guy in a, in a guard heavy league, I'm happy if I get one or two chances in the post or even a, a drive and just a you know a little kick and an easy layup, um, you know which is difficult especially for a big guy because you don't get a ball a lot. You know you you set a lot of screens or run around all the time. Um, but it was it was I felt I found it okay. Um, but that that might be just who I am. Like I didn't mind at all being in the background and just learning and 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 seeing how games go and. You know all the different things that come with it and and, and the fans and the crowds because you're going to play in in front of way more people than you ever done in high school um you know so my, my first year for me was all just just sitting back and and just absorb everything that i'm seeing that i'm experiencing um so i didn't find it too challenging after like your sophomore year it's different um but yeah. the freshman year i was i was completely okay with it so moving it off the court now, what was the culture like or the culture change for you in terms of just everyday life, food, um, getting out socially? Like, how did you deal with that social adjustment from being like a European to now a, a, a American? 
I think the adjustment for me was probably the biggest for every single player who's ever done it because of the two and a half years in CBA, um, which you know as well. But um, I was I was blown out of my mind when I first got there, um, especially the, the campus lifestyle and, and the college lifestyle to, to say it that way. You know, obviously you have the parties which are mind blowing in the beginning. You have no idea what's, what's going on. Um, you know, how, just how the people um, talk to each other, interact with each other, just on a normal day when you're getting some food. Um, it's, it's completely different. And, and also in a positive way, in a way that, you know, as a freshman, you're in the dorms. So you're with a lot of freshmen. Well, all these, you know, 17, 18 year old kids are, I don't know how much smaller than I am. You know, you're like a circus attraction in the beginning. Uh -huh. And 20 people want to take pictures with you in, in, in the first couple of days of school. And they're like, oh my God, like, like what is going on? And then they realize that sports kind of is a big deal in the country. Yeah. Um, and, and the people really look up to you. With the knowledge you have now, if you were to redo your process of going to college, recruitment or your time in college, what would it be? I would do my research a lot better. Okay. Um, a lot better. Uh, you know, I was just a kid excited, you know, to get offers to go to colleges. And, um, you know, like I said, excited, California, wow. Uh, you know, um, a good school, educational wise. But, but, but do more research in the league. You know, it's a, it was a guard heavy league. I had no idea. Um, do more research um, in the coaches, but also the assistant coaches. Okay. Um, you know, so I would, yeah, I would definitely prepare myself better. Look more on the internet, even more on the internet. Um, you know, just reach out to alums, to players there now, old players, anything. Anything else? open up more to coaches but that's just for me personally you know oh, talk yeah, to that's, it's a personal you question something. yeah if you have something on your mind talk to them if if something is bothering you talk to them um don't just go with the flow and think it's normal you know like don't think like okay i'm experiencing this right now probably every single guy is experiencing this because nine out of ten times that's not the case okay What's the, what was the best part of playing college basketball? The way it's lived. And, and let me explain that when I say that. The way it's lived, I mean by that is Americans love their sport. They love it. Like, it's, like the fans are incredible. The people on campus are incredible. Like the amount of support you get. Um, but also just everything breaking down back to your medical staff and, and, and how well that is and how well organized it is and how they look into that and the, the, the physical training part of it. Um, it, it was, it's the best, like there's no physiotherapists or you know, any, maybe in the ACBs or from the FC Barcelona or stuff, but, but, mm -hmm. but the, the things I've played in or Nothing is compared to college. Mm. You'll have five, six physiotherapists running around. You know, you have you have people taping your ankles before every practice. You have, you know, you can go to get an X-ray like that in in a hospital. That, that that's not how it works out here. You're the lucky. You, you're lucky if you, if you have a good physiotherapist at your professional basketball team. You know, and there you have five, six of them. It's a big jump, man. College college sports over here is, is pretty unique. Um, yeah. How how was it playing in front of the fans? Uh, you know, home and away. You know, what was your experience? Amazing. I loved it. Um, you know, home is home is the best. You know, in front of your own fans, a lot of students. You know, that you go to class with. Um, but also playing away games, and for me, the away games were 
you know, I've played in against UCLA or uh, or Utah when there's just 10, 15,000 people. You now it's a little different back back in my university when we were at, at 3,000, you know. Um, but it, it's amazing. Nervous, very nerve wracking in the beginning, you know, but when you're now looking back on it, it's incredible experience. Incredible. What was it like the away fans? Like what was, you know, we've, a couple of people have had uh, spoken about their experiences with the crowd and, you know, trying to put them off and sometimes it phased them, sometimes, you know, what was your experience with the crowd, the away crowd? <laughs> They're not nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that, like I've, I've played in, in the very big schools, like for UCLA, UCLA, for example, the student section has a piece of paper on every seat, but just facts about us players and our, our coach, yeah, 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 yeah. stuff they can yell at us. And I remember at Utah, they, they knew some of my teammates' girlfriends' names, you know, they're, they're screaming, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, and, then, and then in the little, the little um, our conference, games which is a little smaller gyms like around 3,000 more or less they're a hey, they're brutal they'll, they'll get personal with you they'll they'll push you out they'll like and if you win then it's the best feeling in the world oh, man did you get did you get thrown off by any of it did it like affect you yeah, yeah uh, in the beginning definitely you know when you're a freshman you're like oh my god what is happening um, and yeah, I mean, some crowds are, I remember we played at uh, Grand Canyon University, which is no, hey, yeah, yeah. and we're warming up 45 minutes before tip off, the, they open the doors and the students come sprinting. When I tell you like Usain Bolt sprinting to the first rows and they're on us from layup line, like, <laughs> one, I think this is a layup. Oh, he's getting, oh my, he's getting it all. You know, he's getting, <laughs> and, and yeah, when you're on the free throw line, you're like, oh man, <laughs> hey, I might need to do an extra dribble or something because <laughs> I need to, you know, lock in to make this free throw. So it definitely, in the beginning, it definitely phases you. <laughs> after a while, it's just noise and you just cancel it out once you've learned that. But in the beginning, oh. You so said, I might need an extra dribble. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thinking of uh, stigmas as well, um, especially I'm a European coach um, and there's a lot of stigma about coaches knowing the game or not knowing the game. Uh, I'm sure it's the same for players. I know there's a very big stigma about European players of being soft or whatever. What was your take or how did you, how do you feel you was perceived by your teammates um, and, and you know when you was playing against other teams? Uh, teammates is difficult to say um, because even though they might think you're soft and stuff, they won't always say it. Uh, you know, but 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 other other teams as a European big, you're definitely looked at as soft. You know, especially as as, as a lanky, long white guy. Uh, you know, you're you're definitely described as soft. Um, and the 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 thing then is, don't try to be not soft. You know, because that's what I well, that's what I try to do. I'm like, yo, like I'm not soft. Like I'll show you, and then you just get fouls. <laughs> uh, like you're not. Well, okay, let's go, and then you just get fouls, and you do things you don't, you're not good at. Yeah, out of your. So yeah, out of your comfort zone, and then just just do stick to the things you know. That's that's what I learned too. Just you know, play your game. Don't try to play theirs. Um, yes, they look at you differently. You know, European, and he's coming over here, and they. I'll be honest, they don't think you're worth anything. No way, you gotta prove yourself. You know, in the beginning, they had no clue I could shoot. You know, you have guys yelling, let them, yeah, leave them open, leave them open. You, you have to show, you really have to prove yourself that you, you know, can hoop. And I guess that's, so that, you know, when you start knocking down shots and you start, you know, you have a 20 point game or whatever, then they're like, oh, okay. Maybe, maybe the European's not so. Then the respect is even greater. No, because they thought so little of you in the beginning and they were like, okay, oh, he can actually play. Yeah, he's all right. That, that's just, that's, that means they don't want to admit it, but you know, you're a good player. Like, yeah, he's all right. You always got to play it down, man. I do it, I do it all the time when I see players. Oh, that's a nice play. That's a good move, good dunk. It, yeah, might, be yeah. like a, it might be like a 10 on the scorecard. You're like, yeah. oh, it's okay. It's yeah. 
It wasn't terrible. I mean, yeah, it was all right. <laughs> what is the weather like uh, in your state? Um, and are there extremes? Yes, and yes. <laughs> the heat was extreme, and 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 it, it was, in the summer it gets forty plus Celsius, one hundred ten plus Fahrenheit. Um, like you open a door and just a wave of heat hits you. You're like, okay, I'm turning around. I'm going back inside to the air conditioner. <laughs> uh, it was, it is ridiculously hot. Even in winter, it's, it's t-shirt. Like, I, I didn't buy a jacket for four years. Okay. It, it never, it barely rains. When it does, it's for two days straight. And then that's it, you know? I oh, we had a rain for the year. It's, it's as dry as it gets. It's warm. Always the sun's out, like, hot. Okay. Okay, anything extreme like uh, earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes? Earthquakes. Um, not, not crazy earthquakes, but you know, you wake, especially the first time you wake up from them. I remember I woke up, I'm like, what's that? What did I just feel? And then my roommate's like, yeah, it was an earthquake. I was like, oh my. Oh, okay. Going um, back to sleep. Well, well, the first time I'm like, okay, you know, there's also aftershocks and what is this was just the first shock, you know, you start thinking about yeah. all this, learn, but um, no, an earthquake every now and then, but you, you get used to those kind of, I guess, um, but no hurricanes, no, that's like the only really thing that, that we had down there. Uh, must see destination. Uh, Venice Beach. Okay. Did you play? Uh, yeah, I shot. I shot a little bit, but yeah. they. It's too much out there. They. They really? go. They go at it. Um, but also the skate park and Muscle Beach. The whole little thing is amazing to to go to walk around. Um, I really like San Diego. Okay. I really like the city San Diego. Um, Los Angeles is. I mean, you have to go to Hollywood once, you know, just to have seen it. It is it's unbelievably nice. But there are also a lot of poor areas in, in Los Angeles, which I've been through, but not recommendable. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's about it. Uh, I would say Las Vegas, but it's only fun one time, you know, just to see. You know. Just to say you've done it. Yeah, and, and like, you gotta experience Grand Canyon, hundred percent. If you are near the Grand Canyon, go. Okay. Go. It's one of the few like nature things that got me speechless. Like I'm standing yeah. there, I'm like, wow. So I did. I was very happy I did that. But apart from that, it's it's mostly cities and the beach. Any beach is fine, really. Okay. Uh, best place to get food. Oh my, there's so many. Um, best place, best. Like if I gave you, I don't know, if I gave you $40, $30, and I said, hey, go to your best eating oh. spot. You know what I would go for? We had a little sports bar around campus. Okay. Um, and it was kind of like the athlete hangout spot. It was so uh, chill with so many televisions and they knew it was there and the food was amazing. That's why we all kept coming. Um, but I, and other, otherwise, I would probably say BJ's. I like okay. BJ's. I don't know if you know what it is. Um, I believe it's a chain, right? It's a big chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. American kind of grill kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I've been to... Yeah, I might have been there. It's, it's just, uh, they got everything, you know? They got nice cocktails as well, but they got all types of foods, which is yeah, real nice, real nice. Cocktails for when you're over 21, right? Obviously, yeah. Oh, obviously. yeah. <laughs> you're not getting them. You're not, it's as simple as that. You're not getting them, if, you know. They're very strict. <laughs> uh, best place to get new kicks for the sneakerheads. Online? Um, okay. For me, like, I'm a size 18, and, you know, like, it's tough. 
I just got my kicks from the team. <laughs> so you just like kick over a tree and then like just call it out, maybe, you know, for you. Jeez, size 18. Yeah, it's tough. It's really tough. Um, but but then uh, Foot Locker. You know, if you're a normal size, Foot Locker is probably. Do, do, do Foot Locker carry size 18? No, no, no. No, hell, yeah. Maybe one of the trash bags, they, they you know, they can tie it around and. The new Nike, like Airless or something like that, but I mean, geez, they're light. Yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, the ultra light. Hey, if Nike make those shoes, they need to pay us some money for that. Yeah, hey, we started Nike. If you're watching, <laughs> <laughs> like here. Uh, best American holiday and why? Thanksgiving. I will go for that. I, I I'm not I'm not a too big of a fan of American holidays because I think there are too many. Um, and um, but I love Thanksgiving and I love the idea to give thanks. I really, I really like that idea, um, and I think we don't do it enough in Europe. Um, so Thanksgiving for sure. I think in general, um, like rule of thumb, I think not to get all you know deep and everything, but I think in general we don't appreciate what we have. By and large, just day to day. Do you know what I mean? I think a lot of us. I 100% agree. 100% um, agree. You know, even us being here talking like this, I think, you know, it's an amazing. Yeah. You know, it's been six, seven years since, you know, we've hung out and talked and all the rest of it. So I think even the opportunity for us to kind of kick it is um, invaluable. We're, we're so lucky. We're yeah. so lucky, coach. It's, it's unbelievable. And, you know, it's something that I talk to about my cousins and my sister all the time, you know, like, you guys have no idea how good you have it. You know, you have no idea. Mm. And so that's why I really like Thanksgiving, because they, you know, that, that's what they talk about. It. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. Well, you are the first person to mention Thanksgiving and not talk about the food specifically. That's, that's normally what it is. No, 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 no. It's not. <laughs> they eat any excuse they get, they make a table full of food and, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, the food is good, but. Okay. <laughs> um, did you get homesick and how did you deal with that? Um, not as much. I remember when I first moved to Spain uh, in high school still, I got way more homesick than I did over there. Um, also because I was much younger, obviously. But um, for me, the homesickness never really, um, never really was a thing until a couple of weeks before I was going home. Because he was like kind of anxious to go home yeah, kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so far from home that you're not even really thinking about it. You know, yeah, you're yeah. such you're such in a bubble, in a circle. You know, your rhythm every day: wake up, go to class, practice, homework, uh, do this, do that. Okay, next day again. You know, you're on the road. There's so much stuff going on that, for me personally, I never, you know, I very rarely had a time of like, oh wow, I, I like I'm sitting here, I really miss home. Very rarely. Miss the social light, right? Everyone wants to be hanging around uh, Big Red, so you miss the social. I mean, that is true, I guess. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, like if you have your friends there and, and you know, you you can chill with them. And, you know, obviously you keep talking to your friends back home and your family especially. But for me, like most of the times, it was my family calling me rather than me calling them. Okay, okay. Was your mom ever, because I've got a couple of guys here at the high school and their mum's always stressing at them for, for not calling. Did your mum always say like, hey Menno, why didn't you call? In the beginning, definitely. Um, okay. After a while, she just realized like, I'll be fine and I'm just doing my own thing. The one thing she did kept doing was always like, remember to call grandpa and grandma. Okay, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Remember yeah, yeah. Um, your cousin's birthday is, you know, tomorrow or, which I needed to be cry yeah, 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 yeah. I would have no idea that it's my cousin's birthday tomorrow, you know, just as an example, like no idea. Um, 
But then the months right before you go home, which is usually in the summer, you're usually not practicing anymore or way less. You know, you're just in school, which is less fun. And then you're like, okay, I want to go home now. You know, you start thinking about things to do. That's when it really goes bad. When you start planning things out. When you start arranging parties and get togethers and stuff. Yeah, I can I can imagine. Like, all right, I'm over this now. I'm gonna go home. Back to my back to my spot. You know, as as we mentioned earlier, there's there's a lot of uh, distractions as a youngster coming over. You know, you're six, seven, eight thousand miles away from home. Uh, you've got no real parental guidance in terms of you know when you're in your dorm, you're your own person, you're your own guardian. Um, and I think of the age of 18 in most states, most places, you can sign stuff on your own. Um, so, you know, you being independent, how is it, how did you find dealing with the distractions that come with that new independence? So dealing with, you know, drugs being available to you, alcohol being available to you, um, girls being a distraction. Uh, talk us through that. It's difficult. Um, you know, obviously a distraction is very easy to give into. Um, especially the drug part, I've never done it. Um, I never wanted to give into that. Um, for a numerous amount of reasons, you know, you hear stories about how bad it is for you and, and when people go bad on it. Um, on top of that, I, me personally, I felt and still feel like I don't need it to have fun or have a good time or to make myself feel better. You know, I don't think drugs is the way at all. Um, and the most important thing, they drug test, you know, and if you get caught, you're done and your scholarship will be gone and you're on the first flight home. And if I, if that would have happened to me, my mom, I don't know what she would have done to me, <laughs> but I would have slept outside for sure. You know, she would have been all, all six, 10 inches. She would have yeah, broke you down. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be done. Like, yeah, all your, your degree, your chance for a degree and your chance on finding a different university. You know, there are so many kids out there who want to go to college as a basketball player or as any athlete. They have the, 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 the colleges have such a big pool to fish out of, you know, and if 99% of those fish don't have a bad record when it comes to drugs or alcohol or anything and the one percent does they'll take any of those 99 percent much rather than the one and i was not ready to take that risk at all that's true no um what about the alcohol alcohol is 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 much more difficult um because it's more out there you know, you, you, you cannot go to a party where there's zero alcohol. You know, like th this doesn't exist. Um, so what I would say to that is 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 know know your limits. Um, you know, be smart because it's it's killing for the conditioning. It's killing for your body. You know, don't don't maybe have one beer or something. Like know know your limits um, and don't drive. I've seen I've seen guys get caught, you know, athletes get caught um, driving on influence, scholarship gone, and that's the that's the least of your problems at that point. Trust me, especially in America, if you get caught, you are having I don't know the correct terms, but you're not done with police. You got to go in front of a judge. There's a whole process behind it. Um, so and then that's the same for the girls, you know. Um, obviously it's out there you know you're in that that's your age of course it will happen but do it safe you know always you know use protection or don't take any risks because you, you you don't want you don't want to sew up or you definitely don't want to get anybody pregnant um so so be smart be responsible know what you will lose if you don't be responsible about it that's what i always did just keep that in the back of your mind because you're, you're losing a grade more than any of other normal college students. They don't have as much to lose as you do, not even close. So staying on the positive side of it in terms of, okay, you've, you know, you're playing safe or whatever. 
but how did you deal with the distractions of you know hanging out with girls in particular and still studying or still doing what you needed to do to stay on the team like how you know how did you balance that or not fall into the trap of um, just being consumed of that lifestyle don't don't uh, give it a chance to become a distraction and what I mean by that is you know don't don't plan on having girls in your room right after your class when you know you have homework or when you know you have early 6 a.m. conditioning the next morning don't like don't do it you know so be don't put yourself in the position to be distracted I guess is is what I'm what I'm getting at um, and of course a Saturday night if you're off Sunday is completely different than the Sunday night if you have practice Monday morning you know so yeah. be smart be thoughtful about it um, because at the end of the day, if you're up all night with girls and the next morning you have practice and you're not performing and this this happens more than once, coach is going to start asking questions and, and that's just the beginning, you know, then it's just going to roll from there and only get worse. Yeah, fair enough. Hey, some really good advice there. Um, and it's like, I, you know, I think everyone that I've got to speak on this matter, it's, it's not a denial of you can't do certain things. It's just knowing how to manage it. Yep, managing, knowing how to manage your fun, knowing how to manage your time. Um, and you can do stuff that you want to do, but just don't let it consume your lifestyle. Do you know what I mean? You're there for a reason. You're there for a purpose. So, yeah, act like it kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. 100%. Um, last question. Really good question. Um what advice would you give to the youngsters, the new recruits, those who are, you know, again, if it was 16 year old you, what advice would you give to those, uh, to those individuals watching you right now and want to know, like, what advice would you give them um, about going to college? Well, the, the first thing is, you know, you gotta be recruited. You know, it's not just an easy, easy thing. Oh yeah, I want to go to college, so you know, let's make it happen. Like, I wish it were like that, but you know, you gotta work harder than the guy next to you. Um, you know, you gotta put in the hours, you gotta put in the effort. Um, and once you are lucky enough to get some interests and and you know, be able to talk to some colleges and some coaches, ask every question you can think of. Like, no question is a dumb question. Like, ask anything. Because, you know, it's better to be very well informed than just jumping into the deep end. And, and that's tough. That's very tough. And also, also be mentally prepared, especially if it's your first time away from home, you will get homesick. Like it's going, like you have to do your own laundry. You know, you're going to have to do your own cleaning of your room, your own cooking, like all those things is... <laughs> It sounds easy, but it's after a long day of classes and, and, and practices, coming home at night and then, oh man, I gotta cook, I gotta, you have to, you have to eat, you cannot go to sleep with an empty stomach, you can't. So really like prepare yourself in that way. That's a, that's a good point. I think I need to start asking that question a bit more in terms of outside of the basketball, I guess, you know, what preparation needs to be had because I think that's a, a big thing a lot of these guys some of these guys and girls have a, a good home life in terms of mom or dad or whoever sister yeah. big sister big brother ends up doing a lot of work for them in some scenarios um, you know I know parents that will go above and beyond for their son or their daughter and make sure they don't have to want for anything and then when they leave home and they're on their own they they kind of struggle you know they're not used to cleaning their room they're not used to cooking they're not used to washing you know I've, I, I think last year in prep school I had one of the guys I think his second wash and he had a nice white polo and it had like uh like the comforter all on it it was like it looked like like a you know the the paint the artist where they just throw the paint in it. And like this new, I'm like, what happened? It's like, oh, I tried to wash it, but I don't know yeah. what happened. I didn't set it right, and I'm like, 
yeah, it's not just easy just throwing stuff in the machine and then, you know, it does some magic. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's just all about it being prepared, uh, being independent to a certain extent. So, yeah, yeah, that as well. And, and be open to people. No, don't go to a new place and be just on your on your own in your room all the time. You know, not talking to people or you know being very short with people. Be open. Be open for conversations. Do they? Hey, listen, we're gonna go with a couple of guys. We're going to I don't know to grab a bite to eat. Just go with them. You know, get to know them. Be open. Learn. Especially in the beginning, I would definitely recommend doing that. Who did you hang out with? I know, we, you know, I said last question, but who did you hang out with um, when you was on, well, yeah, on campus? Was it predominantly the basketball team or was it like the international group or did you have like an American group or did you have like all three? I had, I had a lot of different groups. Okay. So, so what we always used to happen for me was we practice in the morning and then with some guys from your team, you are in the same classes. So together you go grab a bite to eat and then together you go to class. So you obviously have your, your team as a group. Uh, me as an international, I was always good friends with other internationals from other sports. Okay. So I was very good friends with the, the, the soccer players and, and some um, track and field, you know, play of athletes from, from Europe. Mm. Um, you know, and, and if you know their kind of on the same schedule or, you know, you, you just text them like, hey, you want to go do this, do that. Um, and then you also have your 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 non-athletic uh, friends and, and you mostly hang out with those um, more in the dorms or um, where you're living, you know, your your apartment or because because you don't live with with you live with your teammate. But the rest of the apartment complex is, is, is regular students. So, you know, so you, you have those little groups. It's mainly just mainly your teammates um, and especially American American basketball players. They'll just stay with themselves. They're very close. You know, they're not open for new interactions with other people. And, and, and that's why I say, please just stay open for them because they'll show you a really good time and they'll help you out, out with a lot of things. A mm -hmm. lot of things. Menno, it was amazing to catch up with you, my man. Hey, um, thanks for having me, man. It's been a long time. A very long time, man. And, you know, glad to glad to hear that you're doing well. Um, you know, I think you said some really great stuff, some really great content. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for watching the Euro Step In. Uh, we really appreciate it. I hope you guys, you know, learned a little bit from my experiences as well. And uh, make sure to tune in to any other you know, episodes that we got out here. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in and take care. The game was different, right? The, the, the rules was different. The ball oh, was the Euro, different. The, like, Euro, the Euro style is different in America. The Euro style was a lot different <laughs> in America. <laughs> That's the it's first time y'all seen that Euro step too, huh? Absolutely.